Slow news day. Quiet crowd. Good afternoon. To mark the last day of Made in America Week this afternoon, the President will welcome several living survivors of the attack on the USS Arizona at Pearl Harbor and their families. Other events this week have focused mainly on the products and goods bearing that highly esteemed Made in America label. But truly the most prized thing to have come out of our country have been the brave men and women who have risked their lives protecting the freedom of Americans and our allies around the globe. And just a few minutes ago at 2 o'clock, the President signed an executive order that will ensure the men and women of the greatest military in the world have the ships, aircraft, vehicles, and other supplies they will need to keep us safe in the years ahead. This order commissions the first ever whole government assessment of America's defense industrial base, marking the first time since President Eisenhower that an American president is investing personal attention into the health of the United States defense industrial base. President Trump is committed to maintaining the secure supply chains and robust workforce that will support our nation's heroes for decades to come. Next week, we'll be highlighting American heroes like the World War II veterans, the first responders who keep our communities safe every day, and the boys and girls who will grow up to be the next generation of American leaders. While I'm on the topic of the men and women who protect us, I also wanted to note that the President commended the House yesterday for voting to reauthorize the Department of Homeland Security for the first time. The Homeland Security Authorization Act also authorizes U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement for the first time. Secretary Kelly has already made tremendous progress in fulfilling the President's promise to end illegal immigration and fully enforce the laws of the United States. And this bill reflects the President's strong commitment to ensuring that progress continues. Also on the Hill, of course, Senate Republicans this week continued to work toward our shared goal of saving the American people from the disaster of Obamacare. Earlier this afternoon, Vice President Pence and Secretary of Health and Human Services Dr. Tom Price hosted representatives from several grassroots organizations calling on the Senate to take action on health care legislation. As the President has said, inaction is simply not an option. These groups want lawmakers to know that their members want them to follow through on their promise to the American people. Finally, I'd like to read a statement from the President on the resignation of Press Secretary Sean Spicer. I am grateful for Sean's work on behalf of my administration and the American people. I wish him continued success as he moves on to pursue new opportunities. Just look at his great television ratings. Sean will continue to serve the administration through August. And the President has also appointed Anthony Scaramucci as Communications Director. And I have a statement on Anthony's appointment as well. Anthony is a person I have great respect for, and he will be an important addition to this administration. He's been a great supporter and will now help implement key aspects of our agenda while leading the communications team. We have accomplished so much, and we are being given credit for so little. The good news is the people get it, even if the media doesn't. And I'd like to bring Anthony up to say a few words and take a few questions. As always, I'll be back after that uh, to answer any follow-up questions. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm going to be very brief. I'm going to make my remarks informal, and then I'll take, take questions from everybody. First off, I'd like to announce uh, formally that Sarah Huckabee Sanders is going to be the president. Oh, you can't hear me. I'm sorry. Better? Sarah Huckabee Sanders is going to be the press secretary. And uh, so you can congratulate her after the uh, session. You still can't hear me? No sound? Okay. Better? Better now? Better now? I'm going to start over. You guys heard me in the front, though, right? What did I say, John? Sarah's going to be the press secretary, right? Okay, so congratulations to you, Sarah. Okay. Um, and so. I, I, I want to make a, a, a couple of statements. The first thing I want to say is I want to thank personally Sean Spicer, uh, not only on behalf of myself, the President, the Administration, but Sean is a true American patriot. He's a military serviceman. He's got a great family. Uh, and he's done an amazing job. This is obviously a difficult situation to be in. Uh, and I applaud his efforts here. And I love the guy. And I wish him well. Uh, and I hope he goes on to make a tremendous amount of money. Um, as it relates to me uh, in this position, uh, I'm going to spend a couple of weeks getting to know the, uh, the people here, uh, and I'm going to uh, be as coordinated as I can with the people inside the West Wing. 
Uh, uh, there's been some speculation in the press about me and Reince, so I just want to talk about that very quickly. Uh, Reince and I have been personal friends for six years. Uh, we are a little bit like brothers, where we rough each other up once in a while, which is totally normal for brothers. There's a lot of people in here that have brothers, and so you get that. Uh, but he's a dear friend. Uh, he brought me into the political system. He brought me into the Republican National Committee network. He introduced me to Governor Walker. Uh, we've spent many times together socially. Uh, a lot of people are not aware about this, but uh, after the Romney campaign, I invited Reince into Skybridge. Uh, I think it reflects poorly on Reince that he didn't take my offer to come in and be our chief operating officer. Uh, but I say that in jest, obviously. Um, and so what I want you guys to know is that he was my first call this morning. I met with him before uh, we, we sat in the Oval Office. And we are committed as true professionals to the team and the process of getting the administration's message out. And I think that's going to be one of the big goals for us. Uh, I said during the transition, I'll say it up here, uh, I think there's been at times a disconnect between the way we see the president and how much we love the president and the way some of you perhaps see the president. Uh, and I certainly see the American people probably see the president the way I do. Uh, but we want to get that message out there. Uh, and uh, to use a Wall Street expression, there might be an arbitrage spread between how well we are doing and how well some of you guys think we're doing. And we're going to work hard to close that spread. And so I'm done. Andrew, I'll take the question. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm going to get to as many line. people as I can until she hopes me. Okay. Sure. Two questions so for you. Ahead. Number one, uh, what we have seen from this administration so far is the president being his own messenger very frequently. And that has caused, as you know, some struggles for the communication staff. How do you expect to get this White House back on track? Well, I'm going to take a slight issue with the question because I actually think the White House is on track mm. and we're actually, I think, doing a really good job. Well, I, I actually do think from a messaging perspective because we have a whole list of things. And I, I didn't want to come out here with our list of accomplishments and start a, a whole advertisement infomercial right now. I really just wanted to talk about personnel movement and how we're thinking about things. But I, I, think, we're, I think we're doing an amazing job. Uh, the president himself is always going to be the president. Uh, I was in the Oval Office with him earlier today and we were talking about letting him be himself, letting him express his full identity. I think he's got some of the best political instincts in the world and perhaps in history. If you think about it, he started his political ascent two, and two, two years and two months ago, and he's, he's done a phenomenal job for the American people. And the people I grew up with, they so identify with the president and they love him. And so we're going to get that message out. So my second question for you, too. I'm going to get to everybody. Don't worry. You can speak Go a little ahead. bit about how you plan to, obviously, you're a business guy, you're a Wall Street guy, how you plan to handle any potential conflicts of interest and walk us through how this offer was made to you, mm -hmm. what the president said when you were here, what the conversations were like. Well, I, I don't think it's fair to the president for me to go into the exact conversation because I want to keep those uh, conversations between me and him private. Uh, but we talked a little bit about uh, uh, the White House. We talked a little bit about our personal relationship. And then when he extended the offer to me, I said I would do it because I want to serve the, the president. You know, one of the things, I have a lot of family members that served in the American military. Unfortunately, my generation, I'm born in 1964, I did not serve. I filled out the selective service. It's one of the regrets for my life. So this is an opportunity for me to serve the country. I love the president. I obviously love the country. Look at my life experience here in the country. And so it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to stand here, actually. In terms of my personal business Correct, context? Yeah. yeah, so I have worked with the Office of Governmental Ethics to take care of all of my business conflicts. Uh, my start date is going to be in a couple of weeks so that it's a 100% totally cleansed and clean. And I don't, I don't see an issue with it. The Office of Government and Ethics doesn't see an issue with it, nor does the White House Council. So. But you know, here's one thing I want to say about this, though. When you're bringing American business people into the administration and they've had some level of success in the, in the society, they have to unencumber themselves. You know, it's, it's just a very interesting thing, and it's somewhat ironic. You want to go serve the country, and so the first thing you have to do is take on this mega opportunity cost by getting rid of all your assets. And so, but I'm willing to do that because I love the country. Yeah, John, I'm going to get to everybody. Anthony, you've been watching this White House from yeah. somewhat outside, and I'm yeah. sure you have your own perspective on, on yeah. what you've seen. Not quite as tan as you, though. <laughs> Not that outside. Not quite. Um, <laughs> what is the first thing you're going to change? try to right this ship and put it on a course again I take issue with that I think the the ship is going to go the ship is going in the right direction I think we've got to just radio signal the direction very very clearly um, I like the team uh, let, me, let me rephrase that I love the team and so I'm an incrementalist most entrepreneurs you will find are incrementalists to say something 
overly bold or overly dramatic is unfair. What good entrepreneurs do is they start the day and they, and they go through the process. The Navy SEALs would tell you that if you want to eat an elephant, you've got to eat it one bite at a time, and Sarah and I are going to do that together. I'm going to get okay. to everybody. Gary, go ahead. Uh, Anthony, did you have any hesitation taking this job knowing it might cause some friction in that it might lead to Sean leaving, which is what's going to happen? And the two are at least somewhat coincidental. And did you have any hesitation about how you would relate to the rest of the White House staff if you came in under those circumstances? Okay, well, well listen, you know, I'm a, remember, I'm a business person, and so what happens in business a lot of the times is you have some rotation in personnel as you're, as you're making changes, and you have lifestyle choices that people are also making. I would love to have Sean here. Uh, Sean decided that he thought it would be better uh, to go, and for me, as it relates to Sean, it speaks volumes to who he is as a human being, who he is as a team player, okay? So his attitude is, if Anthony's coming in, let me clear the slate for Anthony, and I do appreciate that about Sean, and I love him for it, uh, but I don't have any friction with Sean. I don't have any friction with Reince. Uh, this is the White House, the United States of America, and we're serving the president, and I want to make sure that our cultural template is that we put the president's agenda first, which is perfect for the American people, and we serve his interests. And so if we have a little bit of friction inside the White House as a result of that, it's okay. We can all live with that. I'm a business person. I'm, I'm used to dealing with friction. You were a significant player during the transition. Was it disappointing that you did not land a post here from the get-go? Uh, again, I would say as an entrepreneur, you have to be accustomed to setbacks. I've had a series of setbacks in my life, which I've written about. Uh, I wrote a uh, best-selling book, and if you don't believe me, you can come into my basement. I'll show you every copy in order to get it to be a best-selling book. And so I'm, also, I'm very honest about mistakes that I've made and setbacks that I've had. Uh, and so uh, was I disappointed? Yes, I said that candidly that I was disappointed. But I love the president, and I'm very, very loyal to the president. And I love the mission that the president has. Okay, since the early days of the campaign, uh, when I went to these rallies and I saw the love that the people had for the president, and a lot, and I grew up in the middle class, and so there's a struggle out there. Uh, the president saw that before I did. I wish I could tell you I saw it before him, but he he taught it to me. Um, and I feel that struggle, and I have empathy for that struggle, and I want to be here to help make things better for the American people. So I'll, I'll take the hits. Yes, sir. I'm going to try to get to everybody. I promise you. I'll, I'll try to get to everybody. Sean told the AP and others that the president needed a clean slate. How does that comport with a White House that's headed in the right direction? And secondly, how badly does the president need a win on health care in order to make progress? Okay, so here's the one problem with the way our society is working right now. We are micromanaging the seconds of the news cycle. Uh, I predict that the president will get a win in health care. That's my honest prediction, just because I've seen him in operation over the last 20 plus years. Uh, the president has really good karma, okay? And the world turns back to him. Uh, he's genuinely a, a wonderful human being. And I think as the members of Congress get to know him better and get comfortable with him, uh, they're going to let him lead them to the right things for the American people. So I think we're going to get the health care done. I also think we're going to get tax reform done. And whatever else is on the president's agenda, we're going to work very, very hard, very studiously here to make it happen. So John. I see the cameras are back. Will you commit now to holding regular on-camera briefings, sir? If she supplies hair and makeup, I will consider it. Okay, but I need I need a lot of hair and makeup, John. Okay, but I don't know. Maybe. Why? Well, I, you know, I think not at all. This is the press secretary. I, I'm up here today only because I think it was the first day we made a mutual decision that would make sense for me to come up here and try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, but we, and the answer is we may. I have to talk to the president about it. I like consulting with the president before I make make decisions like that. You go ahead, John. Keep going. I know you've been one of the, str the president's strongest supporters for, for, for a while now. <laughs> But does he know what you said about him back in 2015 when you said he was a hack oh politician? He brings, it up, he brings it up every 15 seconds, okay? One of the biggest mistakes that I made, because I was an unexperienced person in the world of politics, I was supporting another candidate, I should have never said that about him. So, Mr. President, if you're listening, I personally apologize for the 50th time for saying that. But here's the wonderful thing about the news media. That was three minutes of my life. He's never forgotten it, and you've never forgotten it. And, but, you know, I hope that someday, Mr. President, you'll forget it. Okay, let's go to the next question. Can I ask you one, one more? Just go ahead, John. There's been a question about credibility, um, some things that have been said in, in, in this room. Let me ask you a variation of what I asked Sean Spicer on his first day. Uh, is it your commitment to, uh, to the best of your ability, give accurate information, the truth from that podium? I mean, 
I sort of feel like I don't even have to answer that question. I hope you can feel that from me, just from my body language, that's the kind of person I am. I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to get to everybody. Go ahead. Anthony, you mentioned your relationship with Reince. Was he involved in offering you this position? Was he consulted by the president ahead of time? Uh, yes, he was consulted. He was involved in the, in the thing. There's a lot of speculation in the press about the timing and, and so on and so forth. And so what I'm here to tell you is that we're a team. Now, Can if you through how the job was offered, I, like I said, I think some of this stuff it's it's unnecessary to go into that granular detail because then, you know, it's almost like the book, The Circle, where you have you're wearing like a police camera on you when you're having conversations. I don't think that's fair to the president. But here's what I would tell you, okay? I'm a team player. I've uh, you know played team sports my whole life, at least as a kid, uh, and I believe that you have to subordinate yourself to the greater good of the team. And if teammates don't have disagreements about certain things, uh, then they're not going to get to the championship. You've got to get together and you know mix it up a little bit from time to time. I have no problem mixing up with these the, these guys. I love these guys. I respect these guys. Uh, is it perfect every single day? Tell me whose life is perfect every single day. But here's the commitment that I'm making to you and to the American people and to the president that I'm here to serve him and I'm here to serve the people inside the uh, West Wing. Sarah. Up on John's uh, question, yeah, are you committed then to regular televised briefings and having a transparent uh, relationship with the press? Okay. And I, I, again, I obviously am committed to being transparent because I'm standing here, but I'd like to talk that over with, with the, the president and we have a new press secretary. I'd like to talk it over with her and then we'll get back to you on that. But I, you know, listen, you know, I'm standing right here. I'm going to try to answer every question. Sarah, go ahead. So two quick questions. The first one, obviously, we know the president has been feeling under siege with the Russia investigations, both at the Department of Justice, but also on the Hill. Do you feel like he was feeling exposed? He didn't have people adequately coming to his defense? Is that part of the reason that we, are, we have you here no, today? No, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. so. So one of the things that I'm, I'm doing today um, is I sort of didn't have my White House counsel briefing before I'm having the press briefing, so I want to limit my remarks related to the Russia situation and things like that. But here's what I tell you about the president. He's the most competitive person I've ever met. Okay, I've seen this guy throw a dead spiral through a tire. I've seen him at Madison Square Garden with a top coat on. He's standing in the key and he's hitting foul shots and swishing them, okay? He sinks three-foot putts. I don't see this guy as a guy that's ever under siege. This is a very, very competitive person. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of incoming that comes into the White House, but the president's a winner, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of winning. Sorry, just one, one other question. Yes. Just in terms of the relationship that this press operation has had with, with news outlets, I mean, they've made a habit of calling news outlets they don't like fake news, calling stories they don't like fake news, calling errors that were then corrected, uh, you know, using that as an example to call entire news outlets fake news. Is that the kind of relationship you want with media outlets? What kind, okay, so, how do you so envision me, I, a relationship? Again, I want to I wanna speak for myself right now because I don't, I, it's my first day on the job. I got to get familiar with everybody, get direction from the president. But I had a personal incident with your news organization, um, and I thought I handled it well. I, you know, you guys said something about me that was totally unfair and untrue. You retracted it and issued me an apology, and I accepted the apology immediately. And so for me, uh, I've never been a journalist, but I have played a journalist on television. You know, I used to host Wall Street Week for Fox Business. And so I have empathy for, for journalists in terms of sometimes they're going to get stories wrong. Uh, but I sort of don't like the fake news. And if you said to me that uh, there's some media bias out there, if you want me to be as candid as I would like to be with you guys, there feels like there's a little bit of media bias. And so what we hope we can do is de-escalate that and turn that around, and let's let the, the message from the president get out there to the American people. Yeah, yes. I'm really going to try to get there. How are you doing, Matt? The president, the president uh, welcome. The president uh, is known to see himself as his own best spokesperson, his own mm -hmm. best messenger. That. that was clearly a challenge that Sean had at this podium. How do you plan on navigating that differently than him or Mike Dubke or anybody else? Well, look, here, here's what I would say. Okay, I, again, I thought Sean did a very, very good job. Um, he's a very articulate person. He's had 30 years in communications. Uh, I would imagine that there are people here that are going to be super excited when he lands in a job that he really likes. And he'll be a very effective communicator for wherever he goes. Um, as it relates to standing at the podium, I think everybody has their own individual personality. Uh, I do believe that the, the best messenger, the best uh, 
media person, the most savvy person in the White House is the President of the United States, and I'm frankly hoping to learn from him as well as learn from Sarah and other people here. How would you characterize your relationship with the President? How long has it lasted? How far back does it go? How old so, is it? Uh, he's not, probably not going to remember this, but the first time I met the President, and again, he was a name brand even back in the day, I was 31. Uh, Michael Facitelli uh, was a close personal friend of mine. We were at Goldman Sachs together. He introduced me to the President. I had met him a few more times. Uh, from that, Randy Levine, uh, the President of the Yankees, introduced me to him a few times. Uh, and then I, s I would say that we got closer during the Romney campaign, where we did a couple of fundraisers in his magnificent apartment. Um, and so I think we're pretty, you know, listen, I, I don't think I'd be standing here if I didn't have a good relationship with the President. I love the President. And I think a lot of you guys know in the media I've been very, very loyal to him, and I'm going to do the best I can with my heart and soul on this job and try to serve him the best way that I can. Just one last question. Do you yeah. plan on changes in the comm shop beyond this? Or are there going to be other changes? No, I mean, there was some speculation. The things I can talk about specifically is Dan Scavino and Hope Hicks are staying. So I know there was some speculation about that. I just spoke to both of them. I love the two of them. I go back a long ways with them. Uh, I think they're two phenomenal people. As it relates to the other people in the comm shop, I've got to get to get to know them. Sean was incredibly gracious a few hours ago where we sat in his office and he spoke to them on my behalf. Reins was incredibly gracious. I spoke to them as well. I got to get to know the people. Uh, they got to get to know me. Hopefully they'll like me and they'll want to stay. Uh, and we'll, we'll see what happens. But we're going to we're going to we're going to make it very f a, fun, a very fun place to work. Thank you. Uh, try to get to everybody. Thank you very yeah. much. Uh, are you going to uh, more I'm gonna, I'm gonna discussing about the national security issues at this podium? Yeah. Okay, that's a really good question, but I think it's inappropriate for me to answer that question right now. Um, and so I have to get, unfortunately, I have to get back to you on that because uh, i got to get some direction from uh, General McMaster and the President. I'm going to go, go this way. Blake, I'm going to get to you. I promise. I'm going I'm to do everything I can to get to every person in this room. Yes. President Trump to have a press conference with us in the near future? I'll, I'll, I'll talk to him, absolutely. I mean, I mean, you listen, I mean, the President's phenomenal with the press, okay, and he's, he's, a, he's a great communicator. He won this election. I used to know the math a lot better when I was in the campaign and during the transition, but I think we spent like, I don't know, 60 percent of the money and we had one-third the personnel. We won the presidency because of Donald J. Trump. He is an unbelievable politician. And so, he's, of course, he's going to, at some point, we'll make sure that that happens. I don't know what point that's going to be because I have to talk to him. Anthony, I'm going to get to everybody. I'm, I'm going to do my very best to get to everybody. Let me just go in a, in a way that's somewhat. I'm going to go here first. Uh, Anthony, you seem yes. like a very savvy person. And you said that the White House uh, is a difficult place. How are you going to handle a couple of things? When did I say that? I mean, I probably <laughs> said it. Um, so, um, no, no, I said it. Uh, let me explain that. Okay, let me be specific. It's a difficult place because here's what happens, okay? It's, it's a little cramped in there. Um, you've got a lot of reporters from international news agencies, and it's a difficult place because you're trying to get a job done, but you're sitting inside of a fishbowl. And so that's what I mean by it's a difficult place. I don't mean it's a difficult place to work in terms of the people. I think what you'd find is that there's a lot less palace intrigue than it's getting reported about. And so, but that does create some tension and anxiety. And I'm going to work alongside of my, my peers here to reduce that tension and anxiety because we all genuinely like each other. But how are you going to handle, how are you going to, my question, I'll, I'll how, are you gonna, how, how are you going to handle when a crisis or a big thing comes up mm -hmm. and you put a very sophisticated message out at night and the president in the morning tweets something very different. Okay. And are you willing to say you've made a mistake? Okay. So two questions right. there. Oh, well, listen, I took trial advocacy at Harvard Law School, a little name dropping there if you don't mind, okay? And so I'm not going to answer that because that's a hypothetical and the first thing they teach in trial advocacy is not to answer a hypothetical. But here's what I will tell you, okay? I love the president and the president is a very, very effective communicator and uh, he'll use social media. I think he's got a, I'm gonna, if I get this wrong, I know I'm gonna hear it from him, so I hope I don't get it wrong. He's 113 million or 114 million. I know he's picking up about 300,000 uh, followers a day, God bless him. And so, so to me, I think it's been very effective use of uh, reaching the American public directly. And so listen, we, we, I, I, I welcome him continuing to do that. I think it's very, very important for him <laughs> to express his identity because what I have found when I travel around the country, people love him. 
What do you mean? I'm trying to get to everybody. What do you mean? Say what his message is different than what you put out the night before. Okay, so so again, that's a hypothetical. So it's totally unfair of me to even answer that because how can I answer that? I don't know what the tweet is. I don't know what happened. It's just unfair. And so you learn you learn that early in law school not to answer that question. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Expressed any frustration to you at all that a lot of these briefings have been off camera? And since he wants to get his message out, wouldn't he believe? that put them on camera would be beneficial? He, he hasn't expressed that to me, so I don't know his opinion on that, so I can't answer that question honestly. How I mean, involved in the day-to-day -day operation from the press department will he be going forward? As, as much or as little as he wants to be. I mean, he's the President of the United States. I'm here to serve him. I'm certainly going to do my very best to communicate to him what I think is the most effective strategy for him to get his message out to the American people and to the global community, uh, but it'll be as much or as little as he wants to be. You know, he. He did, you know, give me the orders today that I'm in charge and I report directly to him and I'm going to do my very best to serve him. So as much or as little as he wants. And just yes. to follow on that, uh, yes. your relationship with the chief of staff, mm -hmm. uh, is he your boss or do you report directly to the president? Okay, so I'm going to let Reince answer that. I have no problem working for Reince. I can only speak about my management style, okay? I have been on Wall Street for 29 years. Nobody has ever worked for me people work with me. I believe in a lot of collaboration. I think if you do that, it's very, very empowering for people. I have no problem uh, working for Reince. Uh, the President said I report to him directly. But listen, you guys are going to be very, very surprised about the relationship that I have with Reince and the closeness that we're going to have in terms of working to serve the President. And so he's the Chief of Staff. And so it would be foolish of me not to communicate with him, not to relate to him every single thing that I'm doing. Yes. Do you stand by some of the factual claims that have been contested, that have been made by this administration, the three million illegal votes cast by the President's opponent? Do you now, you endorse all of those statements of fact that have been made? Okay, so, so it's a little bit of an unfair question because I'm not up to speed on all of that, so can you just candidly well, tell me that? said three million people voted illegally. And oh, 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 no okay, so, so, stand by that or not? so if, the, if the President says it, okay, let me do more research on it, my guess is that there's probably some level of truth to that. I think what we have found sometimes, the President says stuff. Some of you guys in the media think it's not true or it isn't true. It turns out it's closer to the truth than people think. So let me do more homework on that and I'll get back to it. I'm, feel, I'm feeling the hook here. I can feel the hook here. So I want to answer. Is it okay to answer a few more questions? Let me get to Blake first. Okay? Let me get to Blake first and I'll go to the other people. Thank okay? you. Congrats on the, on the new job. Question for Are you. Are really congratulating me on the job? <laughs> it's, okay. a, it's a new Thank job. Congrats. Thank you. Uh, you, you've gone through your past of uh, law school, business, finance, but you've never held a communications type role. What mm -hmm. would you say to your critics who say he's never done anything like this and this is the White House? Secondly, um, if you can just lay out kind of why you wanted the job, and thirdly, before you go, why you chose uh, immediately right off the bat, Sarah, to be the press secretary. Well, I, want to start, I want to start with Sarah first, okay? So the, the, the president loves Sarah. He, he thinks she's doing a phenomenal job. I agree with him. I think Reince Priebus and other members of the staff agree. Uh, and I'm super proud to work with her. And I think she's going to be phenomenal as a press secretary. As it relates to me, I think that you will find in my background and my career, I have a lot of communications experience. And I spent a lot of time on television. I spent a lot of time shaping the message for my old firm, my predecessor firm. Uh, and so time will tell. But here's something I will tell you about myself. There's a lot of stuff that I don't know, and so I'm going to lean on people like Sarah and other people uh, to help me be the best that I can possibly be. I'm going to take one last question. I'm going to take this question right here, right? I'm giving the hook, right? So I'm going to take this question. Yeah. Can I follow up on what Blake was asking you? Two, two questions. Because of your legal background and the fact that you mentioned the White House counsels, can you explain to us what role, as someone who's been trained in the law, you plan to play in communications, interacting with the president's legal team, dealing Good with question. the Russia investigation? Yeah. And, and then secondly, can I add on, most analysts who have ever looked at White House communications have, in, in academia or historians, have said that when a president says that he has communications problems, what he has is usually policy and political problems. You're arguing that we're not understanding in the United States how much the president should be appreciated and how much you love him. But can you describe to us how much you think that it goes beyond that concept and that the president has political 
and policy problems. <laughs> okay, so can, okay, so let's start with the first question. Just repeat the first question was what again exactly? So legal, yeah. you're going to interact with the president's yeah. legal team. Okay, in what yes, way? That's, that's a good question. And so I'm close personal friends with uh, Jay Sekulow. I have a relationship with John Dowd, uh, and I'm going to work with Don McGahn and other people to just make sure that we're on message and we're handling ourselves in the most appropriate way possible. Uh, that's the best I can say about that. Uh, so I know Ty Dodd, I have not met, I have not met so Ty. I, I don't know Ty. Okay. And so then the follow-on was, the on was question, yeah. communications problems versus yeah. policy and political problems yeah. and the way you see mm -hmm. that in the context of this president. Well, long ago, you know, Teddy Roosevelt said that the presidency is a bully pulpit and that the president has a great gift and that he's able to control the news cycle and able to control the messaging. Um, and so I think if we get super coordinated around here with the president um, and we go back to what he did, some of the great successes that he had in the campaign and the transition, and even in the presidency, frankly, is delivering that message directly to the American people. To me, I think the policies are, f are fantastic. Uh, I think he's done a phenomenal job. I think uh, Sarah read something that I totally believe, is that he's doing a phenomenal job, and we just need to get it out there a little bit more aggressively, and we're going to try to do that. I got to go, right? I take one. I'm going to take, 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 take one more, right there. Thank you very yeah. much. Mm -hmm. You've talked several times about your relationship with Wrights Priebus mm -hmm. and Hope Hicks and some of the rest of the communication staff. Can you talk about your relationship with Steve Bannon? He's mm -hmm. said to have had strong objections about you taking this job as yeah. well. And then I have one yeah. other thing. All right, so I'm on the record. You know, I've been interviewed about Steve. I think he's one of the smartest people that I know. Uh, I think that he was instrumental in, in helping us win the election. Um, he's got a strong personality. I have a strong personality. Uh, we didn't really overlap at Goldman Sachs, but we both worked there at a period of time. And there was something great about that culture back in yesteryear. Maybe it's true today, although I've been out of Goldman for 20, 21, 22 years. But there were two great things about that culture. The first thing was that you subordinated yourself to the team, even if you had disagreements. And the second thing was that the legendary John Weinberg, who's now deceased, once said, some people grow, other people swell. Okay, and it's a great line to think about yourself. And so for me, I want to keep my head in the game, I want to keep my ego low, and I want to work with Steve Bannon as closely as I possibly can. I have a huge, enormous amount of respect for him. Sarah says I can keep going, said so I'm going to keep going. Said that you, ship, you said that you don't need to write the ship, that, that, that you guys are doing great work, but the yeah. president has a 38 point uh thirty eight point eight percent approval rating in his second quarter that's historically low what okay. are you going to do to change that to better communicate okay, that's with a, the American okay people? so that's that's actually a really good question and so these polls are moving targets and we we all know from statistics which i've taken plenty of statistics courses that it's sometimes the polls could be wrong we do that's know that average. that's gallup's average all right so we're gonna we're gonna use gallup's average but we were using averages during the campaign and people said we were going to lose and we ended up winning and so what I would say about polls is that they're a barometric pressure reading for right now today, but the American people are actually playing a long game, and I think they really, really love the president. And when you look into the individual state-by-state -state polls, you can see the guy's doing phenomenally well. And so it's indicating to me, at least me personally, uh, that the president is really well loved. Uh, there seems to be a disconnection in terms of, uh, of some of the things that are going on, and we want to connect that, Sarah and I, best of our capability. And so that people feel great about what he's doing. I feel great about what he's doing. And I want, well, maybe you're not going to feel great. I don't know you. But I want the American people in general to feel great about what he's doing. I'll take the, take the question. Well, if she Anthony. says I can keep going, I'll keep going. Go ahead. Thank you, Anthony. Um, there have yeah. been reports about General McMaster having disagreements on policy over Russia. Can you say that there will be no other high-profile resignations or exits from the White House staff. Yeah, so that, again, another hypothetical. I, I honestly cannot answer that one way or the other, although I have an enormous amount of respect for General McMaster. I just don't know the situation. I'm not going to answer it because I don't know. Okay. Yeah. You said and messaging as it relates to Russia, where I didn't have say they? That. I mean, you know, I, I specifically, I sp no, I specifically said that I haven't been briefed yet by the White House Counsel about what is appropriate to talk about from this podium, and so therefore, I don't want to take any questions related to Russia. Okay. So, well, well, I, I'd like to ask you though, if is is the strategy that seems to be coming from this White House now and going after Robert Mueller's credibility the right one? Okay. So I again. That's sort of in that zip code of like, you know, the legal team. 
and not really in Sarah or my zip code, so I just want to stay away from the question. It's actually very complicated, and I don't want to bore all the people here with the legal details related to it, but I just think it's important for me on my first day standing up here that I don't go in that direction, so I'm not going to answer the question, not because I'm not trying to be forthcoming, I just think there's legalities there that I don't want to touch. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. much. My yeah. question Thank is really I'm going to take this question oh, first, and then I'll take you. I promise. Thank you, and then, and Thank and you very much, sir. Yeah. Communication These are the last is two questions I'm going to go. Right. Communication yeah. is the key, and president is a great communicator. Mm -hmm. How important is now relations between the president and the press? And you think uh, he's, uh, how he's going to change, and how much uh, he has a faith and trust in the White House press, and what is the future? Listen, I'm a super optimistic guy. You know, I'm, I'm too short to see the glass anything other than half full, right? So I'm a super optimistic guy, and I think that the president's going to have a phenomenal relationship with the president. We'll get there together. Okay, Take this I, last question, then I'm going to... My, my, my question, question is in yeah. zip code. Larry Speaks, who once stood up there, said, don't tell us how to stage the news. We won't tell you how to report the news. Do you think that that's an accurate reflection of what your all's job is? Say it again. Larry don't, Speaks don't, said, yeah. don't tell us how to stage the news. We won't tell you how to report the news. Yeah, Do you think that's I mean, an accurate reflection yeah, of our relationship? I, I, I don't know. You know. We're in a different world. I mean, I have an enormous amount of respect for Press Secretary Speaks. Uh, but when he was standing at this podium, it was a very, very different world. Each one of us right now has a sound studio, a recording studio, a movie studio, a television studio right in the palm of our hands. and so. Uh, we could stage things, and it's going to be read certain ways. It may not be read other ways. But I know what Sarah and I are going to work on is reaching as many people as we possibly can for today's era. Uh, and so maybe he was accurate in the 1980s, but Ms. Sarah and I will think of something cute to say once we start working together. She wants, she wants to give me the hug. She wants to give me the hug. One more? I'll take, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take okay. Yeah. His communications team to know what's in his head at every moment. Yeah. How are you going to make sure that you are on the same page as this president? What have you said to him about the need to know what he's thinking and where he stands as it relates to policy? Listen, I, I, I know, you know, I, I'm not going to speak on behalf of the president. I just feel like I have, a, I have a close relationship with him. Sarah has a close relationship with him. Uh, and I think it's super important for us to let him express his personality. It has been a very successful life experience for President Trump to be President Trump. And so let's let him do that. And, and let me just finish. And, you know, let's see where the chips fall. And then when something happens that you don't like or you like, you'll talk to me or Sarah and we'll address it. Do you plan to meet with them every day? Do you plan to meet with them every day? And do you have Oval Office privileges? Do, you do I plan to meet with them every day? And do I have Oval Office privileges? Do I plan to meet with them every day? And do I have Oval Office privileges? I have, I, I, listen, I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm not one of these people that need to have unnecessary face time with the president. Okay, but I do have Oval Office privileges, if that's what you're talking about, and I do have the opportunity to meet with him because I'm going to be his comms director, uh, and he told me that he's going to put me in charge of this, and so I want to make sure that I'm linked to him and syncopated with him in a way that he likes. And so I'll meet with him, but I don't want to waste his time and sit in the Oval Office unnecessarily. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, obviously, I would have been happy for him to stay up here all day and continue to exhaust all of your questions. But one, I figure I probably should answer a couple today. And also, the uh, president has an event here shortly, so I want to try to uh, work through as many as I can. Uh, and with that, I'm actually going to start with Jeff Mason, since I believe it is uh, maybe your last day and my first. So uh, with that, Jeff, take it away. Thank you, Can you talk just a little bit about how this, was, how this will affect this change will affect the press office and can you speak a little bit for Sean about how he's feeling and how he took this news and how he made the decision to resign? Uh, I, you know I'm not going to speak for Sean uh, in detail. I can say that uh, he understood that the president wanted to uh, bring in and add new people to the team and Sean felt like it would be best for that uh, team to be able to start uh, with a totally clean slate and I think it I want to echo what Anthony says. I think it speaks volumes to who he is to be willing to do that and allow uh, Anthony to come in with a, a brand new starting place. And I think, you know, he's served the president loyally and admirably. He's going to continue to stay on uh, for the next several weeks 
uh, through the transition, and I'm sure he'll be happy to answer some of those questions directly. Sarah, Sarah. Sarah. Hey, Sarah first of all, congratulations Thank on, you. on the job. Um, can you clarify where the president stands on the issue of pardons? Is he considering pardons uh, for <coughs> figures in the Russia investigation? And does the president believe that he has the power to pardon himself? <coughs> Uh, look, I'd refer you to the comments that have already been made by the outside counsel uh, in terms of their actions. The president maintains pardon powers like any president would, but there are no announcements or planned announcements on that front whatsoever. Does he have the power to pardon himself? Does he believe that he has the power to pardon himself? Like I said, uh, I don't have anything to add beyond what the outside counsel has already stated on that front. Major. In his interview with the New York Times, he raised questions about Robert Mueller. Does he endorse his legal team's efforts to undermine Robert Mueller's credibility? Uh, again, um, the president has um, absolutely nothing to do with any of the uh, allegations that are being made. I think he's maintained that and he wants them to complete their process as quickly as possible so that we can move on from uh, the ridiculousness of uh, all things Russia and Russia fever. So, but, but to, to, to the question that I asked, does he endorse his legal team's efforts to undermine the credibility of the special counsel? I'm not aware of those details, and that's something you would have to ask. That's Times something you would have to ask interview. his legal team. I'm not part of that process, so I wouldn't be able to. On health care, what does the president want the Senate to vote on next week? I, I think he wants to. Uh, as uh, Mark Short stated earlier this week, and as we've repeated many times before, the president's uh, preference is to repeal and replace Obamacare. And uh, we haven't been shy or quiet about that, and those uh, intentions have certainly not changed. John? How much arm twisting is going on vis-a-vis -vis the health care bill? The Vice President had a lot of conservative groups over today. Those conservative groups announced that they will actually be scoring votes next week on the motion to proceed, which I believe is unprecedented. Uh, I don't think anyone here has made a secret that uh, this is a big priority and that Congress should do what they've been talking about for the last seven years. It's time for them to get in there uh, and repeal and replace Obamacare. And these groups recognize that. Their constituency uh, that support the groups that they have certainly recognize that. And they're supporting uh, the mission of their organizations and pushing and putting pressure on members to get the job done. Nothing I mean, beyond that. Something too, but just about the organizational structure now that Anthony's uh, come in. Uh, the press secretary and the comms secretary used to be pretty much co-equal reporting to the chief of staff. Will it remain that way because the, there was some move toward making the communications director sort of a deputy chief of staff and then the press secretary and the comms director would report to that person? So do you still report to Reince or do you report to Anthony? Uh, I think that Anthony said it uh, better than I can in this capacity as we plan to work together as a team. And certainly our goal is to work together to pr promote the president's agenda and to do that not just with the two of us, but our the entire press comms office as well as the entire White House staff. Yeah. Do, you report, do you report to him or do you report to him? Uh, we all serve at the pleasure of the president. Kelly. Yeah. Questions for you. Um, number one, when you talk about, there were some comments made by a senior uh, administration official this morning on television talking about the motivations of people who are part of Bob Mueller's uh, special counsel investigation. Do donations to a political party, if it's not the president's party, does the president believe that disqualifies those people from being part of this special counsel? Uh, I don't know that we're uh, putting out a litmus test, but again, questions regarding uh, that, I would direct you to the outside counsel and that's running that part of the process. The question about National Security Advisor McMaster. Does the president have confidence in his National Security Advisor? Uh, I have no reason to believe otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Alex. Um, the president clearly doesn't want uh, special counsel, oh, he said he doesn't want special counsel Robert Mueller to look into his finances, but the intelligence committee is already looking into uh, financial data from the Treasury Department. Is there anything the White House can do to stop that? Uh, look, again, the president's point is that he doesn't want the special counsel to move beyond uh, the scope and outside of its mission. And the president's been very clear, as have uh, his accountants and team, that he has no financial dealings with Russia. And so I think we've been extremely clear on that. Blake. Sarah, Sarah, last time when it became apparent uh, in the House, the first go around on the health care bill there, that it was going to fail, it was pulled at the last minute, within the last hour or two. When you look at both the repeal and replace potential and the repeal only potential, the numbers suggest that they don't have the votes and it's set up to fail. Why, why does the White House believe this time around that a vote should proceed? Again, we're continuing to be focused on repealing and replacing Obamacare. And we're not going to stop until we can continue to move that forward and get that done. Uh, 
not only have we wanted to commit to that, but frankly, a lot of the members of the Senate and the House have not only committed but campaigned on that, and it's time for them to step up and get that the done. The President believes that a vote should take place at some point next week on some sort of a bill one way or another? I don't think you can repeal and replace Obamacare without a vote, so I think it would be a pretty Sarah. necessary part of the process. Sarah. John. Sarah. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I just want to get something straight. Earlier in the week, you indicated you, the White House was not opposed to outright repeal. And then based on your remarks today and Mark Short's two days ago, you seem to favor uh, repeal and replace. Does that mean you are against the outright repeal bill that Congressman Biggs has introduced? Tonight? Not against, but again, as Mark said earlier this week, our preference is to repeal and replace. Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, two questions for you. Can you take us through the process of how the president decided to hire this new communications director, Anthony uh, Scaramucci? And moving forward, um, what will his role be in terms of objectives that the president wants him to meet? Uh, as Anthony said, uh, he's known the president a long time. He's been a uh, loyal supporter of the president's. Uh, and Anthony's somebody who has come from nothing and built an incredible, I think several incredible companies. And he's in one of the most successful smart people that the president could put on his team. And the president recognized that and wanted him to be a part of this process. I think very early on, he was a very strong advocate throughout the transition. And this has just been part of the process to bring him inside the White House. A quick follow up on uh, Rob Mueller. Does President Trump have confidence that Robert Mueller will conduct a fair investigation? Uh, you know, at this point, I don't uh, have any reason to see otherwise, but I have not had a chance to ask the president, and I'd want to get clarity on that before Sarah, I comment. Sarah, Sarah. Z? Thanks, Sarah. Um, I just want to certainly starting January 20th, this administration has cycled through, uh, has seen departures of a deputy chief of staff, and national security advisor, communications director, and press secretary, um, several other roles inside this building and across the street. Um, what does that say about uh, sort of the efforts to staff up this administration at the start? What has the president learned about his team, about himself as president? And can you explain sort of that very high turnover rate that we've seen over the last six months? Uh, I, you would have to ask the president uh, what he's learned in that process. And um, I can tell you, though, I think what we've all learned in that process is that working together and working to accomplish the things that the American people elected the president to do is our focus. It's what we come here every day to do. We're a lot less focused on uh, the who, but the what, and we're going to continue doing that every single day. Sarah, Jim? Do you Sarah, not see that as, as a chaotic Thank you, Sarah. Uh, No, I don't see it as chaotic. Jim? Sarah, is the White House concerned? If you want to see chaos, Zeke, you should come to my house early in the morning when my three kids are running around. That's chaos. This is nothing. <laughs> is the White House concerned news this week uh, concerning the Attorney General and uh, the resignation of Mr. Spicer could have the effect of alienating or demoralizing uh, Trump loyalists uh, both in and out of the administration? Uh, I think that Trump loyalists, particularly within the administration, but certainly across the country, are energized by the accomplishments of the president in the first six months. Uh, stock market's at a high, jobs are growing, regulations are coming off, the country's becoming more secure, the border's becoming more secure, immigration is down. Uh, I think we have a lot of things to celebrate, a lot of things to be excited about, and I think our morale is pretty high. Sarah, Take one Sarah, last, Sarah. Steve. Well, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. I'm wondering if, if you approach this new role with excitement, with trepidation, uh, with apprehension, and if you could reflect on these last six months and one day on what you've learned about how, how it is to speak for the president. Is it, is it a tough job? Have you found it easy? Uh, I think it's uh, probably uh, the one of, certainly professionally, one of the greatest honors that any person could ever have to work in any capacity within this building and to get to do that up here in such a public way and speak on behalf of the president uh, is absolutely an honor and something I will cherish and hope to do my very, very best every single day and be as open, honest, and transparent with you all as humanly possible and will always work to uh, operate at the highest level and certainly with the most amount of integrity as you can. And with that, uh, I think that's a great place to end today. And uh, the president will be having an event here shortly. Thanks so much, guys.